Hi, this is Rob, and this is for my digital fabrication students at FSU, but it's probably useful for anybody who's going to design something in Fusion 360 that they eventually want to cut out using a ShopBot or ShopSaber or some other kind of CNC router. So there's an issue, which is that uh, we aren't able to cut out interior or inside uh, 90 degree corners. So um, I'll just make a quick sketch here to show you what I mean and um, basically if we just if we wanted to we have this circle and we want to cut out a rectangle from it uh, as a slot into which we'd put another piece of plywood obviously we want a square slot for a square uh, tongue that's going to go in here so the the proper terminology would be a mortise and a tenon so the mortise is the hole and then the tenon is this piece that's going to fit within it so what we understand though is that we have a round end mill or bit or um, router bit so basically you can see here that it won't ever really be able to come in and uh, make a sharp 90 degree corner so if we're trying to cut out this material on the inside this end mill is always going to leave us with a rounded rectangular hole which sometimes is just an aesthetic problem and then other times uh, like I said if we're trying to put a rectangular piece of wood through here then we'd end up with a problem because we can't fit a rectangular piece of wood into a rounded rectangular hole so um, what can we do well you can do what woodworkers do when they aren't using CNC equipment and they drill uh, four corners or many uh, holes with a regular drill press and then start carving it out with a uh, chisel so you could let the router do what it's going to do, which is make a rounded rectangle, and then come back in and square the corners with a chisel or a file if you wanted to do that. But, you know, chisels and files are uh, great for proper woodworking with real wood, but we're using plywood, and so maybe we should um, work with the material that we have and with the process that we have. So what I'm going to do is just show you uh, some possibilities for doing that. So I'm going to get rid of this sketch and make a new one. I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to make a sketch on the top work, work surface and then I'm going to make it just five inches in diameter. Uh, I'm going to make a slot, but it's basically, you know, it's a lot easier sometimes to just make a center line and then work on one side of it and then mirror it in the end. So that's what I'll do here. I've got a center line. I'll click on it and hit X to make it into a construction line. And then I'll draw my slot or half of it. So let's add some dimensions. This is going to be, let's say we're working with three quarter inch plywood. Uh, it would be 0.75 divided by two. I want, um, I want it to be half the width because I'm going to uh, mirror it in a second. I'll make this, um, let's say two inches, or let's say one and a half inches. Okay, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll just mirror those two lines that I just drew around this center line. Okay, there's my slot, and uh, of course I'll have this problem, but um, I'll, I'm going to have that problem with three of them because I want to show you three different methods, and so I'll, cl I'll click on all these four lines that were just made, and I'll have uh, I'll have a circular pattern made around this center point, and I end up with three of them, which is perfect because I want to show you three different methods. I hit stop sketch, and I will press pull, uh, and basically pull this up to the thickness of my wood. So what I'm trying to do here is make something that is a piece of wood with, um, or a model of that, of that piece of plywood. Now, plywood is, uh, if it's three quarters of an inch, it's not really going to be 0.75 inches, and we'd have to measure it to find the actual uh, thickness of it. That would affect the, the thickness of this extrusion I just did, and also the width of these slots, because we want everything to fit properly. So. Um, and it also, you know, there's another detail here, which is that maybe we want it to actually be smaller or larger than the, the thickness of the wood, these slots. And that would be because uh, we want it to fit loosely and not have to hammer these things together, or because we want it to fit very tightly. So um, I think normally you're trying to make it a little bit bigger, not, not smaller than the wood. So there are a couple of things going on here. One is if we change to a smaller piece of wood or we measured and found that it's actually 0.73 inches, then we'd have to go through uh, all the sketches, all the extrusions, anything else that we did and try and find places that we made reference to uh, 0.75 inch uh, thick wood and change them. So maybe right away I can show you this thing called change parameters. And if you go um, 
under Modify, Change Parameters. This is what makes Fusion 360 uh, parametric. So this is parametric modeling. We can add our own parameters. I'll add one called uh, Thickness and say that it's 0.75. And so now, one thing is I could actually look through this list and see any dimensions that I've made in modeling are actually in here already. And they actually have names that I didn't give them. So D1 is the dimension uh, for the diameter of that uh, circle in the sketch. So uh, here, for example, is my half of a, a slot, right? 0.75 divided by 2. Uh, that came out to 0.375. And then um, here is my extrusion, where I extruded it to 0.75 inches. So instead of putting 0.75 inches, I could put thickness. And you see it evaluates the same thing, but um, we'll see in a second why that might be useful. I can also uh, change it by actually doing it right in the sketch. So when I made this, instead of putting 0.375 or putting 0.75 divided by 2, I could have put thickness divided by 2. And there's a little FX near it to show that it came from a formula or from the user parameters. So I hit stop sketch. What I could do is just go into modify, change parameters, and say I just decided I was going to use half inch plywood. Um, I can hit OK, and the whole model should adjust. The width of the slots and the thickness of the wood all changed. So I'm going to go back and change that to 0.75. In the class, we're actually using half inch plywood, but for this demo, it'll be easier to do uh, 0.75. Okay, so um, how do we resolve this uh, problem? I think the first one we'll do right here, and it's actually a bit more involved than the other two, but none of them are really that big of a deal. You could also just skip all of this and do it in the software, the CAM software that comes right before um, milling on the router. So uh, the software that we use is called Partworks, and it actually has a feature that allows you to put those kind of dog bone fillets, that's what they're called, in place, and, and it allows you to choose probably from different styles, which is what I'm about to show you. So that's one thing you could do. I don't think it's a good idea to model something necessarily so that it's that it's tied to a particular machine or process or material. If this is what our model is supposed to look like in real life, then um, maybe it's worthwhile to keep separate all of the details that are specific to a, a certain kind of machine or process. So that's why instead of uh, editing the original sketch uh, to have these dog bone fillets in there to accommodate this problem, I'd probably do exactly what I'm doing now, which is make a new sketch that just has kind of the fix. And then you could, I'll show you later, you could actually just turn that off. If you ever wanted to go to laser cutting or water jet cutting, those, those things wouldn't be needed anymore. So you could actually just look in your timeline and find the place where you added them or uh, turn off that um, or you know remove that sketch or suppress it and we'll see that later so I'm gonna make a sketch on here I'm actually gonna make three separate sketches one for each solution but that's not really necessary I suppose so um, I'm going to again make a uh, construction line right down the center and there it is I will also make a 45 degree uh, line coming out this way and I'll make that again into a construction line and um, that wasn't 45 degrees but that's okay I'm going to add a dimension here afterward okay so the way I do this now is to add a circle that kind of represents the diameter of my bit now I let's say I'm using a quarter inch bit I could put point five I could put one slash four for a quarter uh, I could also and it's probably useful you actually going to change parameters and add a parameter that's called bit diameter and put uh, the diameter of the bit here. So now instead of using 0.5, I could um, I could change that to be bit diameter. Okay, so it still says 0.25, and it, but it shows me a little fx there. It's derived from somewhere else. Okay, and the last thing is I'm just going to um, basically say that the dimension here, the distance from the center of that circle to this corner, which is not this, right? I have to right click and choose aligned. And now that distance is going to be my bit diameter divided by two. Suppose I could make another variable called radius, might make things a little cleaner, but this works fine. So that's almost it really. I'll just mirror and I want to mirror this circle across this line to the other side. And if I stop sketch, what you'll find is uh, when I extrude that new sketch, I'll use press pull. 
I'm going to choose all of these profiles. I kind of feel like I don't need to do that one, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, and I'm going to drag it down a bit, and instead of putting in a dimension, I could put all, so it'll cut all the way through. I could use two and then tell it to go to the bottom of my piece. I could also leave it at distance and put in minus thickness here. Any of those actually will work, um, and they all work better than just trying to drag it to the right distance. Fusion 360 is actually smart enough that if you dragged it to 0.75, I think it'll tie it to uh, one of these other parameters. But the idea is that as you change the thickness of um, of the material, let's say you change it to 0.5, you wouldn't, or, or let's say one inch, you wouldn't want to find that these only went through 0.75, right? So we're trying to um, keep consistency there, but Fusion 360 actually is pretty smart in that way. It won't really leave you hanging. But if you um, if you choose all, it'll definitely go all the way through the material. If you choose two, you can say go right to the bottom of this material, or you can type in the uh, the variable that we used. So if you take a look at this, this is basically the solution. Uh, you'll see that um, you can totally put a uh, piece of wood in here and it will go all the way to the end of the slot and its corners will be able to fit in here. So this is a solution that's not too bad. When you look at these uh, pieces together, you'd see a little bit of a gap there, but um, you know, I think this is one of those cases and all of these are cases where you'd have to work it into the design and not just pretend that people don't see it. So uh, let's try a couple other solutions here. If we go to create sketch and make another one, um, this is uh, simpler, but you know the way I like to do these things. You know, basically what we're looking for is a bulge out here, and so the way I like to do these things is to um, to just kind of be real sloppy about it. So I didn't get to make a dimension there, but I can I can do it here. And of course, this is uh, bit diameter, uh, and I'll draw some lines, a real sloppy line from there to there, and another sloppy line from there to there. And then I, I like to be really extra ridiculously sloppy because I like to see the uh, constraints take effect. So I want that line to be parallel with that line. And I also want it, want this line to be parallel with that line. Um, this line should be tangent with the circle, and so should this one. Um, this is basically what I'm talking about, but the last detail is to move it in closer. There's no reason for it to stick out that far. So I can use the dimension here and say the distance from there to there should be uh, the diameter so that's basically it. Now I can um, add my construction line down the center and you know, it didn't add a right angle constraint there, a perpendicular, like I would like this to be perpendicular to that. So I can click here and I could make that parallel to this line or I can also just say it has to be perpendicular to this line. So now there's the constraint. I don't know if you saw it move, but it wasn't exactly down the middle. It's important to notice those things. So um, I do want this to be a construction line and I'm going to use mirror again and mirror these three lines across this construction line in the middle. Okay, stop sketch and uh, I will press pull. That, that, that profile, all of these profiles, the six of them. And again, I'm going to start cutting through and then just say all, or um, I suppose the distance would work too. I'll do minus thickness here. Okay, so um, that one works too, and, and you can see it's a little more... Uh, violent. It's kind of got like a, a big gap here that you would see. And again, this is one of those cases where it has to work itself into the design. This is maybe something that you could get away with, but this is something where it actually would have to become part of the design, which is not necessarily a problem. You could even make a piece that fits in there, kind of, uh, you know, there are all kinds of solutions. Uh, maybe you fill it with epoxy, colored epoxy resin. So it actually ends up being uh, a solution that, that um, has another step afterward. Okay, so um, the last one is very similar to that one, and I'll do it anyway just to show you. I'll create a sketch on that surface again, and um, basically going to do the same thing. So I'll make a sketch, I'm sorry, I'll make a circle out here, and I forgot to do the dimension, but that's going to be bit diameter. And I'll make some real sloppy lines going from here to here, and from here to here. 
and then I'll zoom in and get get all this straightened out with constraints. So um, I want this to be parallel with this, and I also want this and this to be parallel. I want uh, this line to be tangent to the circle, and the same here. And then the last detail is to make this distance from here to here uh, it diameter divided by two. Okay, so it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'm going to make a center line down here so that I can okay, there we go, so that I can uh, mirror it across those two. And here's what it looks like. You know, it's interesting. Um, do things differently, but highlighting these by holding down Shift and then choosing the tool is one way. Uh, it's often easier to do it the other way because now you can just select them without holding down Shift, and it seems to want to select the kinds of things that it's looking for. So I could accidentally before I, I seem to be clicking on this constraint, but here it knows that it's looking for things that aren't constraints. So it's usually it seems to be easier to select the tool first. Um, and then there's the line that I'm going to mirror it over, hit OK, stop sketch, and do the same thing. I'll just do this extrude with press pull. You're going to cut through, and the distance is going to be minus thickness. Okay, so again, it's, it's you know pretty much equivalent to that one. It looks a bit different, but the idea is uh, similar. Uh, this one has less of a backstop to it, where this one, the full uh, end of it is there. So you maybe have to decide which is more important. I suppose this one could um, kind of twist left and right, uh, or it would be harder to twist this one left and right because it's got the full uh, sides to it, but this one maybe wouldn't. I don't think any of these are really necessarily concerns because the slot is so long that it, it shouldn't allow any twisting or anything anyway. So it's I think it's for us, it's mostly about the way that it looks and... Um, one last detail as far as this goes is that you might also find that when we get to the cam portion or when we get to the actual cutting, you might see that it doesn't like the fact that this is exactly the size of the end mill or the, the router bit. And maybe it won't even try and go in there because it's exactly the size. So maybe there's um, maybe we should leave a little bit of slop there. And, um, you know, we'll just we could we could do that by uh, maybe adding something that's called. Uh, clearance and you know make it ten thousandths of an inch and um, then the diameter becomes not just 0.25 but uh, 0.25 plus the clearance and that way we can do a quick test on the router and see if it actually um, works you know if things fit together uh, and I'm sorry, not fit together, but that it actually cuts these. If we saw in the CAM software that it was going to follow it, then we could, um, you know, we could adjust. If it wasn't, if it still wasn't working, we could adjust to make that clearance bigger. It would adjust everywhere. Um, also, you know, I'm not going to talk about it here, but the thickness of these slots it matters as well because uh, it may be that we want this to be a little bit loose, and so. Maybe we have to, in different places, maybe back in the sketch, when we're drawing out those slots, we would say it's not actually uh, thickness divided by two, it's thickness divided by two plus some slop variable. So, um, you know, not too tight is the name of the variable, and it, and it adds, uh, again, ten thousandths of an inch or something. So uh, we can add that all in, and using the user parameters is kind of key to all of that. So the last detail I want to show you is basically if we decided that this wasn't going to be cut on a router, then it's it's really easy to go in and actually just suppress those features where we made those changes. So I'm right clicking on the extrusions and just hitting suppress features. And now, you know, maybe this is water jet cut out of three quarter inch aluminum instead. I don't know. So uh, we don't need those those. Um, uh, dog bone fillets if that's the case. So we haven't really affected our original intent uh, and and we can always um, bring those back when we when we go back to a CNC router. I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know uh, something. But I think that's this is kind of what I want to show you is the idea that you could um, you could resolve this problem um, by 
uh, doing it in Fusion 360 pretty pretty simply. I think this is a lot simpler than doing it in something like Illustrator. So um, there is one last detail, which uh, let's say you know this original solution is the one that we wanted. What I can do is uh, roll back the history marker in the timeline. So we've only done one. I'll actually delete everything after this point and say that we want to do this for all of these. So one thing you could do is um, create a pattern, a circular pattern. Uh, it's asking what we want to rotate around here. We want this and this other uh, face. And we can actually rotate those faces around the axis, which is that center axis, the green axis coming up, three times, which is the same as our number of slots. If I hit OK, it actually makes those faces on each of them. So that's a way to make something like that go faster. Uh, okay, let me know if you have any questions.